Oh man, it's been a while since we last talked. Sorry, um, what's up guys? We are headed down to the casino to finally get some content. Uh, I had a couple hands been playing in the past couple weeks, uh, taking some notes, so we might throw some of those in this episode. Life's just been crazy, so we're trying to get back to it. We got a nice recipe for you guys this week, um, so we're gonna get to that in a little bit, but right now we are headed down to the casino. We're probably gonna buy in three, 400 or so, play the one-two table. It's about, it's early, it's about 11.50 a.m. Um, casino opens in about 10 minutes, so we're hoping to open up that first table. It's usually pretty slow around this time of day. Um, and it's high hand day. So, actually no, it's high hand and uh, straight flush jackpot. So, high hand will get $300 every hour, and the every hour that a straight flush is not hit, uh, $100, $100, $100 or $200, $100 or $200 gets added to the jackpot until it gets hit. So it hasn't got hit in the last like two weeks, so I think the jackpot's a little over a grand, so hopefully we get a straight flush today, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, so, uh, <laughs> First, today's episode, we are going to be making prosciutto wrapped asparagus. This recipe calls for four ingredients. Four ingredients, asparagus, prosciutto, uh, extra virgin olive oil, and a balsamic glaze. You can throw this together quick. Tonight is actually Game of Thrones night over here, so I'm gonna make this little treat for us to have for that episode when it comes out. Um, and yeah, so let's go ahead, let's get started. Okay, perfect. So our first step is pretty simple. All we're going to be doing is we're going to be preparing the prosciutto and the asparagus. Start by preheating the oven to about 425 degrees. While that's going, grab the prosciutto and chop off about an inch or two off of the end. Those pieces really don't cook great. Um, secondly, we prepare the prosciutto. When you're, all you have to do to prepare the prosciutto, slice it directly down the middle so you have two sides of it. Ten slices of prosciutto at the deli is going to be your best bet here. Um, those thin stri uh, strips are going to be able to wrap around the asparagus really well. So what we're going to do is we're going to start wrapping the asparagus in the prosciutto now. But before we get to that, let's take a look at one of the hands that we had down at the casino this weekend. Okay, so for this hand, what we're going to be doing is we are looking at a hand where I had just got back from the two hour break mark in the car. Um, so we're getting ready to top off here to about $300 um, and we buy the button to come back into the game. So Hero in this spot is on the button with Ace Jack offsuit and sitting at about $150 deep. The person to my right has been with me since the start of the game um, and he is really running good. He bought in for $200 and he ran it up to about 600 in the matter of about an hour. Um, just really off of all of this one kid to his right who was calling down with basically nothing and he just took his stack every time. This guy, the guy next to him, younger kid, um, looked like he was there. I don't, know, I don't know what he was doing playing cards to be honest with you. Every, when people were asking him about his hands afterwards, he was, he, his justifications were, um, well, you know, it could come. Stuff like on gut shot straight draws and stuff like that. So not a studied player at all. Um, so that's basically the story of the kid to my right who's the villain in this hand and how he's so deep at this point. Um, however, that kid to his right had actually left and since that happened, he was on a down streak. Uh, or, uh, yeah. And he was really trying to force everything. So at this point, point when we get uh, this hand he is sitting with about 450 so he's already ripped off about 150 in the last I want to say like 15 20 minutes it was getting aggressive like he was re-raising and then getting re-raised um, and basically folding every time so 
I think that's gonna come, that's gonna come into play in this hand for sure. So anyway, so get down to the hand. In this particular hand, here is on the button, and he is dealt Ace Jack offsuit um, with about $150. The villain is to the right, and he has $450 in front of him. We are the effective stack. I decide to make it $10 to go preflop. It was pretty standard at this table. Um, we weren't really seeing anything above 12 bucks. There was one guy who was they raising 10 every time um, and people were basically flatting, folding. That was kind of the threshold. So $10 seemed appropriate for this hand. Um, so we make the raise to $10. I have two callers, including the villain to my right and a guy on the end who is kind of irrelevant in this hand. So we're gonna skip past him. Um, we get two callers. Flop comes Jack-7-6 Rainbow. Pretty dry board. Um, top pair, top kicker. We have to have the best hand a good majority of the time. Um, so I want to get a little bit of value here just to kind of make it look more like a C-bet so I can get some callers. So I decide to go ahead and make 10 bucks and both players call. The turn brings in the two of spades, which makes it so there are now two spades on board. Front door flush draw is available. Um, so what I want to do is size up a little bit, um, but still keep, I mean, the chances of somebody having spades, I think are pretty low here again, and we're gonna find out pretty quickly where we're at. So I bet $20. The player to my left in this hand folds, and the villain who had been ripping off his stack raises me to 55 immediately. Now, to anybody else at this table, I'm folding this hand. Um, it almost seems like he's trying to protect against the flush draw here, which makes it seem like at the top of his range is a set. But if he had a set, I think I would have seen a re-raise and I highly doubt pocket twos were coming. He, I mean, he could. I just think it's highly unlikely that that's the situation. So I still think we have the best hand and I think he's trying to make something happen here. So there's only one thing that I'm gonna be doing here. We rip it all in. He comes and haws for a little bit and he folds and we take that one down. So yeah, it's a good hand. All right, let's get back to the recipe. Okay, so first things first, what we wanna do is we wanna start wrapping up our asparagus in the prosciutto that we have over here. So grab a big baking pan, Line it with uh, tin foil, aluminum foil, and spray it with some non-stick spray. You can also use extra virgin olive oil if you would like. Um, we're gonna put some of this on actually in the end. Um, so I just use some non-stick spray. So let's take a look at what one would actually look like when we're doing it. Grab a piece of asparagus. One slice of prosciutto. And you wanna go right around the base like this. And wrap it right up. And when you're done, it should look nice and tight just like that. Lay that down and repeat. Now that those are all wrapped up, what we're gonna do, it's optional, but you can throw a little bit of olive oil dressing on top of them if you'd like. Um, and they're gonna go right into the oven after that for about 20, 25 minutes. Um, but before we go ahead and do that, let's take a look at another hand we had down at the casino. Okay, so hand number two. Um, in this particular hand, we have the same villain to my right, um, who has now managed to get himself down to $175 from his peak of 600. So you can see where this day is going for him. Um, there's also another villain who's gonna come into play into this hand. This person is, I've played with him many times. He's an older guy and the hands that he, he's an OMC to the core. Hands that I've seen him show up with today have been pocket kings, pocket aces, ace king, and 
He said he had pocket tens at one point when he had folded another hand um, before the river. So his range, like, I, his range is pretty narrow. I mean, he's at the top of it every single time he's in a hand, which makes me a little nervous getting into any hand with him. Um, but there's a decent amount of fold equity there if the board comes out uh, not you know favorable to those types of hands. So in this particular hand, um, I am now sitting with 300. Uh, the villain to my right has now run it down to his 175, and the old guy down at the end is at about 300. So, me and the old guy are pretty even. OMC, sorry. Um, all right. So, in this particular hand, we are dealt the Queen of Spades and the Queen of Diamonds on the button again. Um, the action doesn't get back to me until the villain to my right makes it $12. His range is so wide here. I don't want him going anywhere. I want to keep him in this hand. He, you know, I don't want him going anywhere. So I, just, I decide to flat here. As does the older guy. So we're going three ways to a flop. The flop comes Jack 10, 10 rainbow with one diamond. Uh, and the diamond is a 10 of diamonds, I believe here. Um, so not a bad board. Um, we still have an overpair. Could they have, they have highly unlikely they have 10 and probably one of them will have a jack. So I think it's a pretty good spot to bet. Um, checks around to me and I decide to make it $15 and both call. The turn comes in the king of diamonds. Not the best card because now we have the front doors, the uh, front door flush draw coming on board and we also have uh, any, both of their ranges are going to include a king. I'm not nearly concerned about the guy to my right as I am about the older guy down at the end of the table. However, when it checks to me again, I still feel good about my hand. So for this particular spot, I, I just, I don't want to induce, I don't want to get check raised. Um, so, which I think is very within the realm of the person to my right, not so much the older guy. Um, but I'm still really, I don't want to risk it with top pair here. I don't even have top pair anymore. Um, so I decided to check. The river comes in the seven of clubs. Not changing anything. The flush draw is missed. So we're going to see what happens. I just, it checks to me again. And now we feel great about our hand. However, I'm not going to showdown. I still think a king is in their range. I still think they're trying to play it relatively safe since I was the initial preflop aggressor. Um, where ace king is definitely in my range. So I decide to leave for, lead for $35 here. Um, surprisingly, the old guy calls me and I now I think I'm dead. There's just no way anything's gonna happen here. Um, and the guy to my right folds. So kind of crazy, I flip it over and show my pocket queens and he shows ace jack and we take it down. So. I don't know, kind of an interesting spot. All right, cool. So what you just saw was the asparagus coming out of the oven. Um, and what we did was put a little bit of balsamic uh, glaze on top of that before throwing it back in again. Earlier I said that we were throwing them in the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. That all depends on how you personally like your asparagus. I like mine a little bit crispier. I also like when the prosciutto comes out crispier on top. So 20 minutes should get me uh, right about to that point. Uh, if you want to go a little bit less, that's fine too. It's all in personal prep. Okay, so next thing what we're going to do is we're going to go in there. We're going to finish them off, show you what the end product looks like. I'm hanging out outside in my lawn over here. House looks pretty good. We actually just did a bunch of yard work, which is why these vlogs have taken me longer to get out, but uh, is what it is. So uh, with that, let's take a look at one more hand this week that I had. Very interesting spot. Um, and yeah. Okay. Last hand from the day um, is something that I was actually really proud of myself for making. I think this is a really good play, but I don't know, we'll see what you guys think. Um, so 
We are dealt, now at this point in the day, we're very, it's, it's very late. Uh, the only people who are left from the table when it had opened this morning are me and one other guy, I think. And he's not in this hand. So there's a new person to my left now. Um, the guy to my right ended up busting out after rebuying. So he basically ran it down about $800. Um, it was crazy. It was crazy to watch. I got some of it, so I'm happy. Anyways, um, so in this particular spot, we're dealt Jack-10 offsuit on the button. I have $300 in front of me, and the villain just sat down with 150 bucks. So we have no reads on him at all. It folds around to me on the button, and I have to believe that I have the best hand a vast majority of the time. So even if I put in the steel raise here and I get called, I'm okay with it. If I get re-raised, I know where I'm at, and I can let it go relatively cheaply and get off the hook here. So um, I decide that I'm gonna make a min raise, risk the least amount that I can, and try to just get the blinds. Um, so that's, a, that's exactly what I do. I make it seven bucks. Um, the small blind calls and the big blind folds, so we go heads up. The flop comes eight, five, six, all spades. Um, so, not the best board for us because we don't hold a spade. However, we do have two overs. We do have a backdoor straight draw. Uh, we have to go run a runner to get it, but it's there. Um, so he checks it over to me, and I'm thinking $15 bet here, something around this pot, would it be about pot size bet, should get the job done unless he connected somehow on this board. So I go ahead and make it 15 bucks, and surprisingly enough, he decides to call. Um, all right, that's fine. So we come in, the turn comes in the nine of diamonds. Now we're open-ended, and I feel a little bit better about this spot. Um, betting here, I think I'm still betting as a bluff, semi-bluff, um, but we do have outs. So I decide to size down a little bit in relation to the pot, and I make it 20 bucks, and he comes along, he calls as well. The river comes in the six of hearts. So now the board is really scary. Um, there's flush draws out there, the, the, there's boats out there, there's trips out there. It's just, it's a really scary board. However, the way he's been playing this hand doesn't make me believe that he has any portion of that, of those types of holdings. I think a flush is re-raising me on the flop. So I can, I feel good I can rule that out. A pair of sixes, yeah, could he have a third six to make a set? He could. Um, is it in the small blind calling range? I doubt it. Um, so I think this is a better board for me to wrap, honestly, because um, I can have high pockets here and have a better two pair than he can. Um, so that's exactly what I'm looking to do. So he goes ahead and he checks it over to me again, which makes the decision even easier. Why would any of those strong handings at one, two, especially ever check a river like this? So I go ahead and I decide that I'm gonna bet $25, um, and that should get it done, surprisingly enough. So put it in, and he tanks for a long time. Um, the bet sizing here was meant to look like a value bet, 100%, but I, I needed it to be big enough so that it looked like I just wanted to get paid for having a good hand on that board. And I thought $25, given the string of events so far, would get that done. Um, and the only way he's calling me is if he has something better. And I think in that case, he's re-raising. But again, I don't think there's anything out there that he could possibly have. So seems to me like I still have the best hand, so I make it 25. He tanks for a long time, and I honestly thought I was getting a call here, but he ends up folding it. So first triple barrel bluff? For me, I don't know. Felt good though, took it down. All right, let's get back to the recipe. Boy, all right, so it is now, let's see, you guys can see that. It's 5.08, we got here at noon. We opened up the first table. Last time I checked in, we were stuck $15. All in all, we were in for $300 today and we just cashed out $520 for a profit of about 220 bucks. So yeah. All right. And just like that, episode four is a wrap. Thanks guys for checking us out. Hope you enjoyed the recipe this week. If 
you want to see a certain recipe, if you want to see certain hands, I don't know, whatever you guys want to know, leave a comment down below. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, do all that. Win on the felt, and from everybody at the Grinders Cookbook, thank you, thank you, thank you. Episode four is a wrap. Have a great day, everybody.